Today, we are going to talk about genes and how they relate to Darwin's finches. Charles Darwin was a naturalist whose scientific theory of evolution by natural selection became the foundation of modern evolutionary studies. He believed that living things could change over time and adapt to their surrounding environment through a process called natural selection. Darwin studied many different plants and animals in the Galapagos Islands, but his study of finches was very important to his research. There are multiple kinds of Galapagos finches that all look very different. Why is that? It is because of their DNA. DNA tells the organism what to become. You, bacteria, plants, and Darwin's finches all contain specific DNA. Your DNA is a combination of each of your parents' DNA. Genes are information in the form of DNA. Each gene is made of two copies, one from your mom and one from your dad. Your DNA is unique because it is a different combination of these copies, which is why no two people have the exact same traits. Traits are what you see, like the color, size, or shape of a living thing. Traits are determined by your genes but they can also be influenced by the environment. Natural selection is the environment's way of allowing species with the most successful traits to survive and reproduce. Species with unsuccessful traits don't survive well in their environment and therefore die off before they can reproduce. That's why we don't see giraffes with short necks or cheetahs with really long legs. A good example of this is if two kinds of mice have different fur coats, one black coat and one tan coat, and they both live on ground with dark rocks, it is easier for the black mice to blend into the environment to escape predators than the tan mice. Because of this difference, the tan mice are easily seen by hawks and other large birds that like to eat mice, and they aren't able to survive or reproduce and pass on the tan coat color to their offspring. Eventually, over generations, the population of tan mice will get smaller and smaller until there are none left, while the black mice are able to survive and reproduce, and their babies will have black coats, just like mom and dad. Two scientists named Peter and Rosemary Grant wanted to learn more about this idea of evolution, so they performed a 30-year study of two species of finches native to the Galapagos Islands in 1972. Each year, the pair observed the changes in body size, beak size, and beak shape of the medium ground finch and the cactus finch. In addition, the grants monitored environmental factors over the years in hopes of understanding why these finches were changing or evolving. They discovered that the size of the finches, the size of the beaks, and the shape of the beaks were changing each year, sometimes gradually and sometimes strikingly. The grants were watching evolution occur in real time, but why would these, spe these species of finches exhibit body and beak changes after year? The medium ground finch and the cactus finch eat specific seeds, and the growth and production of these seeds is highly dependent on rainfall and sunlight. Just as Darwin believed, the grants observed that changes in rain resulted in changes in the shape and size of seeds. Each year, the birds that could easily eat the seeds had better chances of survival and mating. This is an example of natural selection. In short, the grants observed that these finch populations would adapt their body size, beak size, and beak shape in response to the composition of the seeds produced each year. Like the finches, parents can pass along desired traits to their children. That is why you might resemble your mom, dad, brother, or even great-grandfather. Traits are passed down in the form of genes throughout families. In many animal environments, survival depends on the organism's traits, so natural selection can play a big role in how the future generations appear. This is why evolution can be observed gradually, sporadically, or often unexpectedly in species like the Galapagos Island finches.